Welcome to Arizona Football Today. It's the Wildcats and the Colorado Buffaloes this afternoon in Boulder. Glenn, we have not said this afternoon all season long. We've got daytime football for the Cats and the Buffs, two struggling teams in the Pac-12. Gunner Cruz, Glenn, is back in the starting position at quarterback. What would you like to see in this third start for the young redshirt freshman? Well, I'd like to see him really be in command of this offense. And I hope that he was a guy that studied a lot of film to understand what he did in the past and how he can change that. Well, we go back to the fact that Gunnar Cruz has maybe the biggest arm on the team, but I'll go back to what I said last week in terms of Jordan McLeod, and I want to see him be proficient in the short passing game. One of the things we yeah. saw from Jordan McLeod was his ability to get those running backs in, involved out of the backfield, check down if that first read is not there, maybe even script him some one read throws to make it a lot easier for him. Glenn, on the flip side, Jer Eric Broussard ran up a bunch of yards against the Arizona Wildcats last year, 301 to be exact. He has not had that type of ball game since then, but you know they're going to want to establish him. Well, they're going to look at his film. They're going to un our film and say, <laughs> wow, we can run the ball. But you know what? We're going to look at our film, their film too and say we're going to run the ball. So if we're gonna run, we can run the ball and get Gunner really calm down and let him get some short passes, and then we should – Try to hit him deep. I think we can really do that against Colorado. Looking at their film, they're capable of doing that. Uh, um, throwing the long ball, and Gunner has the, has the arm for it. All right, You're absolutely it right from the fact that last year, Michael Wiley had equally as good a rushing game yeah. against Colorado's defense. So what's the key, do you believe, for this Arizona Wildcats defense and how they stop this run? Don Brown came out this week, and he said the thing that's killing his defense is run after contact. And tackling, you know, we, we've talked about it across the board, how bad an issue it is across the game of football. I mean, you can go from the NFL on down to the high schools. Tackling and finding players who can tackle is at a premium in this sport right now. Well, well that's going to be a key thing, too, is obviously the tackling. It also is, is boxing him in. Stay in your lane. Don't give him cutbacks and be able to do your job up front and not letting the offensive linemen get to the second level so our linebackers can flow and get to the uh, running back and make the tackles. When they get there, they got to wrap up and make sure they keep them, keep them stationary and make sure that other people can hit him. That's what we have to do. I don't see a lot of that, but I'd like to see more of it and more being more fundamentally sound on going after the, the, the running back and holding him up or getting him down, or even when you got him, to make sure other people can hit him. All right, and Glenn, speaking of running backs, the emergence we've seen uh, from Stevie Rocker, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I just mentioned it a little bit earlier, how Jordan McLeod was able to get him involved in the passing game as a receiver, and uh, what have you liked about the young true freshman and how he's been able to have an impact on this offense? I like when he gets his opportunity, he takes advantage of it. That's one of the things that you have to do as a big time player coming in a big five conference and you're a big time player coming in, playing in the Pac-12, take advantage of your opportunities and Stevie's doing just that. And I'm really excited about him doing it. Well, and it's created an interesting thing in the, in the running back and we'll go, running back room, we'll go back to what we, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the season, Glenn, and how this was going to be in the pecking order. And, and one of the guys that has kind of disappeared has been Bam Smith. We have not seen him at all this season. And I'd said week one that I thought the reason he had fallen down the depth chart was because you had two, I, I always saw him as a receiving running back. Yeah. He had the ability to carry the ball but it was clear that wasn't a role that they thought that they were going to be using him in and I thought the other two guys in front of him mm -hmm. uh, Drake Anderson and Michael Wiley were better receiving running backs and now you can throw Stevie Rocker into that mix that now it seems like he's passed Bam Smith yeah. in that respect uh, it's disappointing for Bam because it looked like in 2019 he was a guy that was going to be able to help this running game yeah I, I really don't understand what's going on with these with the coaches and how they're doing it I don't have any inside information on that or anything but you know, I, when I saw Bam play, I thought he took advantage of the situation every time he got in, because and he excelled. There's something going on in that in that room that he's not playing. So we don't know what's going on. But when he has that opportunity, you got to take advantage of the opportunity, because football is a game of you know, hey, people get hurt, 
people make mistakes. You get your opportunity, got to take advantage of it. Well, it could be pass protection, Glenn. I had a yeah. coach once tell me that the easiest yep. thing to keep a running back off the field is, is not protection. being able to, to perform and pass pro. All right, one guy who we're starting to see return to this offense, Glenn, is Jamari Joyner. Yeah. He threw a touchdown yeah. pass in last week's ball game of the loss to UCLA. What do you anticipate his role is going to be uh, moving forward? We saw him. They them try to throw a couple passes to him in the last game. He dropped one, and then Gunnar Cruz skipped the second one. So um, obviously, I mean, he was seemed, seemed to be really frustrated on that last pass by Gunnar Cruz. That's a connection maybe that hopefully those two are working on, and we can get going. What I what I would like to suggest to uh, Jamari is that you know, just relax, relax, understand they're going to get the, when you get to the ball, when you get it, make a play. That's what we have to do, because if you're dropping balls and you're doing all that stuff, you're too excited about, because we know Jamari's got good hands. He's shown us that he can do that. He's going to get targeted. He's going to get thrown to. Let's see him make some plays. All right, on the Wildcats defensive side of the ball, a loss this week and J.B. Brown, Glenn. That was a guy that provided a lot of depth and even more so, I think he's just a good guy to have on the team. Yeah. He didn't play last year. We love the fact that he was back this year. Seems like there's some personal things well, going on. He just had a kid, so they could be trying to well work out coached. those details. Yeah. It's not easy being a 22, 23-year-old student athlete and becoming a first-time father as well. There's a lot of things that you yeah. have to balance. Yeah, that, that's pretty tough when you're you're playing football at the University of Arizona or any university. You're going to school, you're going to practice, you're going to workouts. Where's your time for your kid? That's the that's the biggest thing. And I feel for JB. I, I hope he, he takes care of his what, what's going on and gets that straightened out and maybe we can have him back next year. Yeah, because like I said, he's a great guy to have inside that defensive line room, just a, a veteran yeah. that, that brings a nice, uh, smart uh, leadership type of presence for this Arizona ball club. All right, this is a chance to get off this schneid, Glenn. 17 losses in a row. The last yeah. win came in Boulder. Never an easy place to play. Uh, and, and you know, you're, anytime you go to that altitude, when the guys go into that type of situation, what do they have to prepare for in those elements? I know wind can sometimes be a factor in Boulder. Yeah, I think the wind could be a factor there, but I don't think the altitude is going to be a big factor. The guys will get there. They'll get acclimated. And if you're in good shape, I think the the – Elevation does take a little bit of effect out of you, especially in the first part of the game when your adrenaline's flowing and you're taking those deep breaths, deep breaths. And what it's going to happen is that they're going to, it's going to smooth out and then they'll be ready to play. I don't think that's going to be a factor. All right. Well, Khalil Tate had a breakout game in, yeah. in Boulder, Colorado. Maybe we can say the same for Gunnar Cruz yeah. and get this 17 game losing streak stopped here. All right. It's the Wildcats and the Colorado Buffaloes again, kickoff at 1230. We'll be back. We'll break it down for you on Sunday night.